<coughs> well, welcome back. We were talking about Gaza and Palestine and Israel as a whole. Um, so let's now just, we want to move to the future. And there's the short-term future and the long-term future. Let's talk about the long-term future before we talk about the short-term future. Let's just jiggle things around a bit here, uh, shake things up. I mean, one of the key issues, or the key issue, if you're going to talk about long-term future of Palestine, is whether we're going to have two states, two Palestinian states, or one. Are we talking about a three-state solution, a two-state solution, or a or one state solution, you know, greater Israel and I mean, whatever. But the point being, um, if you want a two state solution, and some people still believe in that, then in theory, at least, you need to rectify the current status of Palestine, which is two separate nations, Gaza and the West Bank. So how are we going to do that? There's only one way, I think, and that is to have a leader whom can exercise authority in both Gaza and the West Bank. Now, clearly, Mahmoud Abbas is incapable of doing that. Up to a point, Arafat did manage to do that. Um, Abbas has been a catastrophe when it comes... I mean, a sweet man though he may be, in many respects, he's, he's done his best. But he has failed completely to, um, to exercise any authority in, in Gaza. Um, he has great difficulty managing in the West Bank, I would argue, but he does his best. Um, let's face it, he's pretty wrinkly, he's cracking on. Uh, the whole leadership of uh, Fatah and the PLO is is ancient. I mean, they were old men compared to me when I was a young man. And look how old I am. Uh, well, you can't see. This is radio. But I promise you, I'm cracking on. So, you know, they're, 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 they're quite an age. Um, and uh, uh, they, so... <laughs> So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say um, that, well, that we need new leadership in due course if we're going to unite Palestine and have a really credible peace process. Now, who's that going to be? The names have been thrown up. All sorts of old wrinklies have been thrown up. Um, even uh, dear old Jabil Jube, I heard his name thrown in the mix one time. Uh, Oh, sweet man, I know him well. He was um, he was quite a character, uh, is quite a character. A great big teddy bear of a man responsible for security in the West Bank at one stage. Um, but come on, I mean, Jabril, you're lovely, but no, I mean, it's not going to be, is it? I don't think it's going to be. Anyway, so and no, I mean, there's so many other names floated, but there are only really two names in the in in the frame. Dahlan. I mean, two, when I say names, only two names in the frame, only two names that could unite Palestine, the West Bank and Gaza, right? Now, I mean, there are plenty of other names. You could have another um, wrinkly that would, would be like uh, Abu Mazin. But um, there are only two names that, that could unite uh, Palestine. Dahlan and uh, Barghouti, Marwan Barghouti, Muhammad Dahlan, Dahlan. You may disagree with me, and you may think it's ridiculous that I even suggest these two names. Um, sometimes I, I don't know what I'm saying myself. I think, my goodness, do I really believe this? Dahlan, um, of course, he was responsible for security in Gaza under Arafat. He has the backing of many major nations, the United Arab Emirates most particularly, and the United Arab Emirates has become a big player in the Middle East. You know, I mean, it, it's UAE warplanes that bomb Libya. UAE is a forceful major player, lead player in, in, in the Middle East, small nation though it may be. Um, well, it's got a lot of money too, of course, that's one issue. Um, anyhow, the um, Gaza, 
largely is supported financially by Qatar, as you know, uh, with Israel's agreement. Uh, they, somebody has to support them, and uh, nobody else will. Iran certainly won't. You know that Iran hates Hamas. Uh, you just, you just, just, just be clear, just in case you're getting muddled about these things. Iran hates Hamas. They feel betrayed by Hamas because Hamas opposed Bashar al-Assad when the chips were down. Hamas wouldn't support Bashar al-Assad, Iran's chief proxy in the Middle East. So Iran feels betrayed by Hamas and will have little or nothing to do with Hamas now. Um, just in case you are wondering, I mean, you can argue with some justification that Islamic Jihad is a proxy group for Iran, but not Hamas. No more, no more. Um, where was I? I mean, I'm just I'm di digressing. Forgive me. Dahlan, um, Dahlan was in charge of security in some pretty tough times in Gaza. In fact, I would. He's Gazan, of course. Um, I would argue that it, for a long period in there, he was not very popular uh, because he ruled with an iron fist. I, um, I was uh, astonished by how firm Dahlan was in Gaza because I had discussions with him about prisoner release and, and boy, he was firm. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The point is that um, Dahlan is a young man okay is he young how oh, what's Dahlan's age I have to check myself but he's uh, he was born in 1961 makes him 57 compared to the rest of the Palestinian leadership he is a baby because most of them are ancient ancient as the hills I mean amazing they can stand upright so Dahlan is is fifty seven, so you know he's 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 a he's a chicken he's a kid, and Dahlan is um, is a tough guy. And now here's a curiosity: he's become popular in Gaza. He wasn't for a long while, um, but he's become popular in Gaza because he's brought in cement he's you know he's perceived as uh, a man that can deliver he's helped he's been kind in these latter years of his life to his people the Gazans and you forget old wounds and you're grateful for God's sake you're grateful for anybody that can deliver anything if you're a Gazan so Dahlan has become popular in Gaza um, and he has authority in the West Bank. He has some, he's, he's a tough guy. Uh, he has the backing of the United Arab Emirates and other, and the allies, therefore, of the UAE, like uh, Saudi Arabia. Saudi is important. Um, financially, it's important. For goodness sake, uh, Saudi Arabia offered $10 billion to Abu Mazin if he would back Trump's peace plan. But more about that in a minute. Um, <coughs> so uh, the, 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 the point is that uh, Dahlan's got UAE backing, therefore he's got Saudi backing. He is a important player. Saudi matters to Israel. Israel cares about what Saudi thinks. They have a uh, unspoken alliance against Iran. So they, they share an objective there. They um, they work together on on things. So, uh, yeah, Dalan is important. He could unify Gaza and the West Bank. And the other one that could do it, if allowed, is Marwan Barghouti, of course. Marwan Barghouti is in jail on countless charges of murder by the Israelis. He's, um, um, he's an interesting man. I know him. I know these both these men well. Um, Barghouti is uh, accessible, or was, I mean, before he was locked it up in prison. Um, very accessible. Uh, he was very popular and therefore frightened the Fatah leadership 
I mean, you don't want, <laughs> you don't need somebody to compete with you who's a younger boy. I mean, Barguti is younger than the Rinkties that lead uh, Fatter and so on. Uh, he's uh, he was born in 1959. That makes him a few years, a good few years younger than me, and uh, it makes him, uh, yeah, well, it makes him 59 years old. Um, so, so he's cracking on, but and he's he's what two years older than Dahlan, but these are both young men in the in uh, in Palestinian leadership terms, very young men. Uh, so uh, compared to the pack, uh, therefore, uh, what were we talking about? Um, yes, so Barghouti has credibility. He's loved. And that's why Hamas are bothered by him. He's, he, he is a kind of Palestinian Mandela. Um, and Hamas had the chance. You remember Corporal Shalit? They had him under, they had him in prison. They had that boy uh, that they captured, that Israeli boy, um, who was just, uh, just an ordinary kid, really. Um, and they held him. And then they had to exchange him in a prisoner swap, and they got, wow, a whole pile of prisoners. It was always, they always uh, said, oh, uh, top of that list would be Marwa and Barghouti. When it came to it, they, they wrinkled out of that. They just left him off the list. They didn't ask for, they could have asked for the release of, um, <laughs> they could have easily asked for the lease, release of Barghouti in exchange for Corporal Shalit the most important Palestinian prisoner on earth. Uh, did they know? They said, oh, Egypt didn't want it. Come on, nonsense. Nothing to do with Egypt. Hamas didn't want it. Hamas were frightened of Marwan Barghouti's popularity. Hamas terrified of Barghouti. They, 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 this guy was popular, more popular than them by a mile. And if uh, he were released and then stood as president, and you know, and so on. Uh, the consequences would have been as tough, perhaps more so for them and their power in Gaza than it, it, it would have been for Fatah in the West Bank. Um, and so both of them are nervous of, of the release of Mahan Barghouti. And of course, Israel didn't particularly want the release of Mahan Barghouti anyway. I mean, they would have grumpily released him in turn for, for in return for Shalit. But... Um, they didn't want to re see him released because uh, it would have united the Palestinians and um, they would have had to deal with somebody pretty serious um, on the Palestinian side. So, uh, so we're in a situation where what's going to happen? Dahlan, I presume. I mean, unless you have... Um, a kind of uh, Israeli de Klerk. It always, it always makes me smile, you know, uh, that Nelson Mandela gets all the credit for all the wonderful reform of apartheid. It wasn't really Nelson Mandela. It was de Klerk, the South African leader, who released Nelson Mandela. Um, that set up the end of apartheid and and peace in South Africa and a better future for South Africa. How great the future could be for Israel uh, once it's integrated with the rest of the Arab world and there is peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Israel could be the hub uh, of the, the Middle East, but uh, Israeli leadership doesn't see that, doesn't have the kind of vision, I guess. Okay, uh, so I'm, what I'm saying is Unity and long-term peace requires a new young leader. Barghouti would be ideal, but if not, Dahlan. Um, and I hope there's an inevitability about that soon. And that will bring hope for the Palestinians. Okay, now there's more to say I'm going on uh, because I haven't, uh, I haven't covered all the ground. I want to talk about... Trump's peace plan next.